are one of the foods most associated with longevity. For optimal health, scientists recommend eating a cup of beans every day. Beans can be one of the best sources of clean, whole food, plant-based protein, for example, such as athletes and seniors who might need to boost their protein intake. Eating beans at most meals can be a great idea. Beans may get a bad rap of making people gassy, but that's no reason to cut them out of your diet. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. This one is a narrow bean one. Narrow bean one also has irons, and actually it is the best in, 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 in when you plant it, the yield is very high. Every crop farming to be successful, there has to be seed multiplication. In Kamwenge district, western Uganda, farmers in this area have for long been engaged in bean farming and are now taking it a step further to bean seed multiplication. Kamwenge is one of the areas with environmental conditions that support bean farming in Uganda. Florence Banjirana is the chairperson of Kamwenge Bean Farmers Cooperative located in Kamwenge Town Council. As an organized group, members have been trained in bean seed multiplication that they later supply to farmers who grow it as food. When I made a research as a person, I found at least every person every year has taken 55 kilograms of beans. And when you visit our schools, prisons, even in our homes, you find that they cannot spend a week without eating beans. So I thought of that, that when I plant beans, I'm likely to have the customers to make business in beans. Well, at first, I didn't have enough land, but when I thought of that, of course, I had to think of land first. So I had to try by all means and hire land. After knowing that I have seen the land, of course I had to consult the researchers. So the district had to, uh, to help me and talk to researchers from Naro, whereby the Naro had to send a breeder or a researcher who came into the district. And of course, as I've told you, the production department had to look for farmers and among the farmers I was among them. They brought us different varieties. Among those different varieties whereby we had to get some beans which can take a short time because of the, change, the climate change and those who are resistant, more special to pests and diseases and those which can do more special in the season of March rains. So they brought us like 15 varieties and we had to begin with demos. Among the best varieties with qualities conducive for farmers in this region include the Narabin 1 variety matures in 60 to 68 days with yield capacity of 1,500 to 2,000 kilograms per acre. It is best suited for low altitude areas and can escape drought periods. Narabin 2 matures in 58 to 68 days and yield capacity is 1,600 to 2,200 kilograms per acre. Narabin 3 matures in same period as Narabin 2 and yields between 1,500 to 2,000 kilograms per acre. 12C this variety is a climbing bean and is doing well in areas of Kamwenge, Kabale and Kisoro. Although all these are hybrid varieties, they are considered the best over the local varieties. This is because of the advantages which include rich in iron, disease resistant, easily affordable and easy to cook. 
These ones also now, these ones are not of iron, but they also take 75 days. They are good, they are of a good size. So when it is even, in, when it comes to marketing, it becomes easier for us because the size of it is manageable, is eatable, and also the sauce is also good. The sauce is thick, so it is a bean which is good and which is marketable. So this one is 16. This one is a narrow bean one. Narrow bean one also has irons, and actually it is the best in, in, in when you plant it, the yield is very high. It leads, but in marketing it has become difficult for us. If you see its color, it is like a climbing. The climbing beans, there are some which have the color of this narrow bean one. When we are in the market, farmers think that it is a climbing bean. So they say, ah, for me, I'm not taking a climbing bean. Narrow bean four. It also takes 75 days. It is a very good seed. It, it is, has a good soup. And even the size, they keep almost the same size when you, you harvest them. It is very rare to find them when they, they, they have beans which are not of the same size. But also the local farmers like it. And even when you go outside our area, they also like it. This one is different from this. This takes 70 days and this one takes 75 to 80 days. This one is number four, and that one is number 16. So they are different in sizes and even in color. I advise more especially these beans with irons. First of all, you know, Kamwenge is a place where you have refugees. These iron beans, they help these children to grow, more especially physically, mentally, and they even add in blood. We have another challenge of climate change. These iron beans, most of them take a short time and the yield is really so good. So when we, we don't have even enough land, sometimes you can plant in a small place and you find you get the, the yields which are good. Beans are planted with a spacing of 15 cm by 10 cm on a well prepared and tilted land. One acre needs 80 to 90 kilograms of seed and weeding is done three times after planting. It is advisable to apply NPK and urea fertilizers with amounts of 50 kilograms per acre and DAP of 100 kilograms per acre. You need to begin with a small garden like half an acre. And of course, when we buy this seed, we buy it, it is very expensive. A kilo, we buy it at 8,500 from Naro. So you may find that when you are beginning, you don't have enough capital. When you plant 10 kilograms, that is a half an acre. When you go through all the procedures I've talked, weeding in a time after three weeks, spraying, handling post-harvest, you will get 300 kilograms out of 10 kilograms. When you plant two and a half kilograms, you will get one, 120 kilograms. We normally plant in a lane. From one lane to another, it is 15 centimeters, 15 to 25 centimeters. When you are planting one bean to another, it is also 10. So when you are planting these beans, you, you do like this, you, you may either cut a small tree, you measure it on how I'm doing it like this, so from here to here. When you are having that stick, you can press it down, and you see that if you put the bean here, then where the second one. So the bean must, you plant the bean here, then another one here. Each hole you put there one bean. Sometimes a mistake can happen, two beans can drop there, but there is no problem. You can, we cannot dig a deep hole because when it goes down, down, it can't come up very well. So you do like this. You can see 
When you are used like this, automatically even if you don't make measurements. Now you have seen. Now when I want to begin another line, as I told you, that must be two meters. Where this soil has fallen, that's where I begin. You can see. Now this must be the second line. From one bin, like this, you can see. I plant one bin here, another one here. Challenges in bean seed farming are countless, ranging from crop protection to storage facilities and knowledge. Changing weather patterns in most parts of the country leave farmers with less options for production of high yields to meet the market demand. The bean we plant is very expensive, more especially to we farmers as you have seen. Two, getting it in a time, sometimes it is also another issue. So you must make an order early because there are not many. That, getting this foundation seed is not easy to these researchers. So you must prepare yourself early. So getting it in time is a, a challenge. It is very expensive. Three, the climate change is a, ve a very big issue. As you have seen in the garden, almost you are, you are seeing that there are so, so many gaps. It is not that we do not plant, we planted, but because of too much sunshade, some did not germinate. Then we have pests and diseases. They also attack us. As you have seen, because now the rains are about to begin, we shall be having so many diseases affecting these beans. Then another issue is getting fake, fake, fake uh, chemicals. chemical industry is a leading distributor of quality crop protection products in Uganda. Among the products they deal in are fertilizers, fungicides and pesticides. Their business is to help farmers understand the farming challenges and how to handle them. Um, so talking about challenges that a farmer may be faced with while growing beans, of course one of uh, the most common ones that I have mentioned earlier is the issue of weeds. So as the weeds grow, also the weeds, so uh, sorry, as the, as the beans grow, also the weeds germinate. Weeds have the ability to compete with the beans for food, for space, for water, but only that. Some weeds are known to have a pests, and so after the crop has germinated and the weeds are also growing along, the pests move from the weeds to the beans. Uh, so starting with the weeds in particular, uh, it is very important to control weeds the first 15 to up to 30 days after, ge after the beans have germinated. Uh, other pests that usually affect beans include aphids. Uh, aphids suck sap from the beans. They also transmit viral diseases. So as part of uh, uh, our recommendation to control such insect pests such as uh, aphids, we recommend application of insecticides such as uh, Dudua Salamectin, very effective for control of uh, uh, aphids. Uh, we also recommend application of, there's an, uh, an organic uh, botanical insecticide called Nimbecidin. Nimbecidin is a nim based uh, insecticide which has the ability to repel insect pests. So that means it, pre it prevents the insect pests from coming to the beans. But the fact that it is organic, it is safe to use and therefore uh, it is considered one of those products that once combined with, uh, uh, with for example, the synthetic ones like Dudu Aslamectin, a farmer has very effective control of quite a very wide range of other insect pests including white flies uh, and fl flower beetles uh, plus uh, foliage beetles which usually affect, uh, affect beans. There, there's quite a range of diseases caused by both uh, fungus and, and bacteria. Uh, some of those are what we call common blights. Uh, blights caused by, uh, by bacteria, 
and other diseases like leaf spot diseases. So during the season, as the season progresses, for example, fungal diseases prefer conditions that are moist. Uh, a, a very prominent uh, preventive fungicide we have on the market is called Indophil. Uh, it is prominent especially with tomato growers. It can also be used uh, by beans growers to prevent fungal diseases from setting in. But its function or its role is only to prevent. So if a fungal disease sets in, we usually recommend that someone switches from the preventive fungicide to a curative fungicide. So for example, if you've been using Indophil to prevent the fungal diseases, once you realize you have some leaf spots, uh, setting in then you can switch to prevent uh, curative ones such as uh, topilite, we have harvester excel and quite another ad, other ranges of uh, fungicides which are able to, to help you cure the diseases. So, But with the bacterial diseases we would prefer that someone prevents ahead of time. We have uh, a potent uh, bactericide called bactericide. Actually it's the only one on the market. Uh, once a farmer starts to spray, we recommend that someone includes uh, in the spray mixture uh, about one teaspoon every 20 liters every time they need to apply to prevent fungal, uh, I mean sorry, bacterial diseases uh, that may attack uh, the beans later in the season. Application of fertilizer is also recommended to ensure that someone has a very good crop. Talking about fertilizer, with, at Bukola Chemical Industries Limited, we deal in uh, foliar fertilizers, which are balanced with major elements like NPK, but also micronutrients. Micronutrients include iron, zinc, manganese, molybdenum, boron, and several others. So we have fertilizers that farmers uh, are supposed to apply during the growth of the crop, and that is from establishment up to about flowering. So when the plant starts to flower, we also switch to another fertilizer which is supposed to enhance the performance of the crop during that stage. So during growth, we recommend application of uh, uh, foliar fertilizer called Super Green. There's an NPK fertilizer uh, with uh, 10, 10, 7.5 and trace elements. But we also have another Super Green in granular form uh, with 1919 and also trace elements. So during the flowering stage and bearing, we switch to another fertilizer and this is called Cara. So the application of Cara ensures that uh, the plant bears uh, many flowers and of course you know the number of flowers a plant bears of course is in, in direct, direct line with uh, the, the number of pods and therefore the yield that a farmer will harvest at the end of the day. So we recommend that as a farmer grows beans, as you, you dig your holes for planting this, uh, the, the bean seeds, you include, uh, you apply a product called Humet. Humet is a, 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 a natural product uh, that usually is, is known to come from humus but releases uh, humic substances that uh, help to break the salinity and release nutrients that enable the plant to access them very well and grow uh, very well during uh, the season. Post harvest handling is still a serious challenge for many farmers in Uganda. When beans are poorly dried and stored, they will pick moisture and develop molds, hence lowering the market value. To ensure the beans are properly dried, they must have moisture content of 13%, after which they can be stored in silos for months before finding the market. When beans get here, we sample to determine the quality, the quality that we want. And most importantly is to see that the beans are dry enough. Because if you accept seed in a store which is not dry, it can easily decompose. So there are different methods that uh, different people use to determine moisture content depending on uh, capacity. Those with sophisticated capacity use what we call a moisture meter, which we don't have. That seed or grain can, should, be, should have a moisture content of at least 13% for it to qualify to be in the store. But now for us, without it, we use the technology of a bottle and salt. So we subject, we subject, see this bean, we subject this bean to a salt test. A salt test, we get a, a few grains sampled, we put in a bottle like this. Then after, we get crystals of salt, this bottle must be dry. We get salt. 
you put salt in this bottle like this so when you when you put salt here you make sure that there was no water initially because we want to, to determine whether there is still water so what you do you shake this bottle with the seed and the salt for at least 15 minutes you keep observing now after 15 minutes if there is if these beans are not dry enough you will see water crystals on the what within the bottle but when you keep shaking it and you don't see water crystals then you know this bean is dry enough so after the harvest uh, usually farmers uh, face challenges such as uh, the bean weevils and on, not only that uh, there's also an issue of aflatoxin uh, that uh, is also common around uh, with harvested grain at Bukola Chemical Industries Limited we recommend that you harvest your beans in time dry them very well and clean the beans after cleaning the beans we have a product uh, called uh, Pixbag uh, it, 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 it functions naturally uh, with a, a system we call the hermetic system uh, this system keeps oxygen out and this uh, prevents uh, or deters the insect pests we call uh, the bean brochids or the bean weevils from accumulating within the beans. But it is very important to make sure that the beans that are stored are first dried to a moisture content below 14%. They are clean because if you do not clean them, either the stones or the chaff that remains uh, in, the, in the harvested beans could pierce the bugs and that prevents the bug from uh, cutting the oxygen out. So the beans remain safe and the beauty about it is that uh, it is known to keep the beans in such a condition that for the, past, for the first one year the amount of fuel, either charcoal or firewood or gas that one needs to cook such beans will be equivalent to that that one requires to cook fresh beans. So it has a bearing on the economy of fuel we use for preparing food but also on the time. So they cook within the same amount of time such as that that the fresh beans will require. 29% of children in Uganda are still malnourished and need fortified food. Beans are an important food to solve this problem. Beans can be prepared as a sauce or produced as bean powder which can be given to children as porridge or prepared as simple snacks. 